very warm welcome to wherever you're joining us uh, around the world. We are live at Matcham HQ in the Essex countryside in South East England. That was the scene about 15 minutes ago. I'm very pleased to report we have had sunshine poking through the clouds. Long may it continue, although, Dan Barker, the weather report doesn't look too it pleasant doesn't. for Saturday. It amazingly held out last Saturday. What an amazing opening night we had. I mean, it was epic, wasn't it? Yeah. It was unbelievable. It, you know, I, I, I've got to admit, I was concerned because I think about four o'clock last Saturday, the, the heavens opened and you're thinking, oh no, it's going to be a washout. Everything's going to start sliding down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> the whole <laughs> the whole <laughs> ring, all of us yeah. just end up at the bottom of the valley. Yeah. No, but no, no it, it, it was brilliant. And uh, I think most importantly, um, that the boxing lived up to it. Did, the the it? fights were epic. You know, the last two were fantastic. And... Hope for more this week, mate. Yeah, Lee Wood will be watching our main event uh, this Saturday night with keen interest. He's the new WBA regular belt holder. Just wonder whether those conversations about Leo Santa Cruz, will he be upgraded at some point? If he was to fight the winner of Dickens and Galahad on Saturday night, would he then be upgraded to full I champion? Think so. There is something very, very special in the air in this weight division, but that is our main event on Saturday night. Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens do battle more than eight years after they first met uh, for the British Super Bantamweight title. They meet for the IBF featherweight world title. Yep. Um, 12 rounds on Saturday. Six fights on the card in total. Akib Fiaz is up. Um, that will be live on Before the Bell, actually. So I don't know if you guys saw on Saturday, but Darren and I uh, do our preview show about 6 o'clock where we have a little matter. We spoke to Jordan Gill last weekend, yep. which was great. here, of course, open fight camp last year. Um, and then we'll comment out on the first fight on uh, Match and Boxing social media, their YouTube channel, and it will be on the Zone platform as well at about 6.15 local time, whatever that translates to wherever you are watching. Um, so Fiaz is up against uh, Kevin Baldespino. Um, six, three... Uh, Eight three-minute rounds of Baker Pond, super featherweight. He is on the stage uh, with Baldespino and Eddie Hearn. Let's hand you over to them now. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Darren. And what a week we had last week to kick off fight camp. Incredible, incredible night. After the disappointment of the loss of Connor Ben through COVID, who is back training in isolation now, we went ahead with an incredible card, and boy, did it deliver. Lee Wood, a stunning victory to become the new WBA featherweight world champion. Shout out to Chris Billum smith and Tommy McCarthy on an incredible fight for the British Commonwealth and European titles. Game-changing deal for Jack Cullen, beating Abney Yildirim. Anthony Fowler getting the job done ahead of his huge fight with Liam Smith, October the 9th, live on DAZN. And this week, we have an absolute cracker for you. We expect more drama um, as we go into the World Championship fight, the IBF featherweight world title between Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens. Three big heavyweight fights on the card. Wardley against Nick Webb. Tremendous fight for the English heavyweight title. The savage Alan Babich back in action in a great fight as well. The Romford Bull, Johnny Fisher, and of course, Akeem Fiaz and Ebony Bridges against Beck Conley to kick off the live action. But first we start with, as I said, Akeem Fiaz against Kelvin, Kevin Baldespino. Akeem, welcome. Bittersweet, I guess, for you. Fight camp this year, the heartbreak last year of your fight falling through with Kane Baker. This year, you've got fans here. It's going to be incredible and looking ready to go on Saturday. Yeah, no, like you say, it's supposed to be here last year, um, but everything happens for a reason and I finally get my chance, so thank you. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Got quite a few people coming, so um, look forward to a great night, yeah. You're a fighter that has a, a tremendous future ahead of them, but also needs those learning fights, if you like. Kane Baker was the perfect fight for you at that time. COVID's kind of restricted the opportunity for fighters to get that opportunity to probably fight every couple of months as well. But you've got a good run coming up here. And once you kick through this year, looking to, to win titles in 2022. Yeah, like you say, um, this is great for my development. These sort of fights, um, they're not easy. They're learning fights. Um, I'm learning, learning trade. And like you say, uh, want to pick some titles up, yeah. But like you say, first as well, activity is key. I've been inactive for 10 months by the time we fight. So as a prospect, that's a long time, really. And yeah, get active and then get some belts next year, yeah. Baldespino always gets thrown in in tough fights against uh, young, unbeaten prospects. Very game, very tough, expecting a, a good fight on Saturday. Yeah, he's definitely one of them opponents. If I'm not on my game, he'll cause me problems all night long. So I need to be the best version of myself. And, you know, I look forward to a good performance, yeah. Kevin, welcome. And by translator there as well, you look in great shape. Uh, you always have to take these tough fights, but you're going to give the British fight fans a great fight on Saturday. Bienvenidos, estás en, pareces estar en muy buen forma. Eh, siempre tienes buenas peleas. ¿Cómo vas a, piensa que va a pasar la pelea en sábado? Bueno, eh, me he preparado muy bien para esta pelea. 
eh, vengo muy motivado con esta pelea, eh, muy orgulloso de estar en esta velada de Macron, un campeonato del mundo, y la verdad que me gusta prepararme bien y vengo a dar un buen espectáculo. He's prepared well for this fight. He's very motivated for the fight, and he's proud to be on this card on DAZN, and he's, he likes to come prepared, and he's, he's ready for a great show on Saturday. When you fight these prospects or, or guys that have big profile, you're only ever one win away from a major opportunity yourself. So it could be, could be a huge moment for you on Saturday if you can win this fight. Cuando peleas contra los prospectos así, estás a una pelea de probablemente un, un, una buena oportunidad para usted. ¿Qué piensas que, que puede pasar el sábado? ¿Cómo tan motivado estás? Bueno, vengo muy motivado, con muchas ganas. He entrenado muy fuerte para esta pelea y la verdad que vengo a dar un buen espectáculo y la verdad que me van a ver en la pelea y cuando es así, con prospectos así, me motivo mucho más. He says he is very motivated, he's very willing, he's trained very hard, and he's coming, you know, everything's come together nicely. You'll see in the fight on Saturday how, how well he's prepared for this. Thank you, Kevin. And finally, Akiv, I know you, you're a huge ticket seller yourself. You've got a number of fans coming down, only 250 tickets available, but big plans for a big show in Manchester later this year, and if you can get the job done on Saturday, it's going to be great to see fans back. Yeah, no, um, it's been, I remember last time there was no fans there, didn't really enjoy it too much. Uh, I'm glad that they're back. Um, most of Oldham's going to be here as much as, as much as they could be. Um, and yeah, look forward to, like you say, later on in the year, but first focus on Saturday and get the job done. Thank you. Akeem Fiaz against Valdo Spino, kicking off the action on Saturday Night Live on The Zone. Gentlemen, if we could have a head-to-head -head here, please. Thank you. to uh, Aki Fiaz's team, Jamie Moore, obviously uh, Nigel Travis as well. I think they expected uh, Bauda Spino to be a little bit taller than he is. Uh, there's, there's actually nothing between them height-wise. I think they maybe expected that the, the body might be there for them um, on, on Saturday night. He's a good fighter, Bauda Spino. Yeah, he is. He's, um, he's a winner. Mm. Uh, and, and that's exactly what uh, Fiaz needs. And look, do you know what? I think uh, Kane Baker put in a great performance last time Did, yeah. out for Fiaz. And I think it was and a perfect eight rounds for him. He would have learned an awful lot in that contest. And uh, look, I'm a big fan of Fiaz. Uh, I like how slick he is, how fast he is, his foot movement. Just there, there's a bit of everything to like about him. Um, I, I, I can imagine um, a few fights that he's desperate to, to get a stoppage, you know, get, get uh, a couple of stoppages under his belt. But so far, so good. He, yeah. He's a class. Yeah, how class far act. he's come since he was brought in uh, under the radar just to help Carl Frampton with sparring. Uh, for, for the Josh Warrington fight, which just ended up being fight of the year 2018, of course. And uh, so impressed was Frampton and, and the team, they kept him on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, he's, he's become uh, some young prospect. So that's an eight rounder um, on before the bell, uh, 6.15, that, that fight will kick off. We'll be live from 6 p.m. across Match and Boxing social media uh, and on the Design platform as well. Um, and then the live broadcast starts uh, at seven o'clock local time. Ebony Bridges back in action for the first time since that fantastic scrap with Shannon Courtney for uh, the WBA Bantamweight World Title and the worst shiner that we've seen in recent Oof. memory. How she carried on those last three rounds and made it so competitive, I, I don't know. But what a fight that was. She proved herself um, and now she's coming back against Beck Conley, who for the first time is going into a, a fight with a, a decent opponent with on a, a camp. full camp. With a camp. Uh, and that makes a big difference. Yeah. It's, been, it's been slung in there. Like The only way I can compare that is because I, I never really had that, no. obviously being uh, a prospect coming through in, in the pro ranks, is when you're sparring, all of a sudden your coach might say, oh, you, you, you're just sparring with you know, Joe Bloggs in a couple of days, you know, wow, all of a sudden. Right. But when you've got time to prepare for that style and you know exactly who you're getting in the ring with or sparring with, it just helps, you know, you can devise a game plan, etc. Uh, and Beck, look, she's a, she's a good fighter. She's extremely fit, we know that. She, she she's, uh, keeps herself in great condition. But back to Bridges, she's, um, yeah, she did prove herself. Obviously very popular, you know, she she's a numbers woman, you know, people like to tune in. But she can fight, she can scrap, you know, she's hard, she, she's, she's an hard case. <laughs> she's yeah. proved that, she's not afraid to get stuck in and that was a, that was a good fight against a pumped up Shannon Courtney. Yeah, great fight that was, I wonder if we'll see a rematch at some point uh, down the line. Of course, Rachel Ball will be looking to get back in the mix as well. She was due to fight Shannon uh, in week 
one. Of course, that's now been moved to week three. And of course, Rachel Ball is off the card altogether. And then Shannon got injured as well. So it's all kind of up in the air at the moment um, yeah. in this division. And there's some very, very good fighters um, around the world. Juliana Villa is the one that kind of stands out, the Mexican uh, world champion. But um, these two will certainly be looking to get in the mix. A big opportunity this for Beth Connolly and an opportunity for Ebony Bridges to remind everybody where she stands uh, in the rankings. They're both on the stage, standing by with Eddie Hearn. Checking the mics, all good, all good. Um, the return of the Blog Bomber, Ebony Bridges against Beck Connolly. Welcome, Beck, welcome, Ebony. Um, Ebony, last time out, just a tremendous fight for the world title against Shannon Courtney. Uh, there was a lot of people that were unsure of your credentials, whether you were ready to fight for a world title. Quite frankly, how good you were. Um, you showed everybody that night with a tremendous fight, suffering a bad injury late on in that fight, battling through, and you gave the fans a great fight, and now, Fantastic test against Beck on Saturday. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, I thought that my last fight was a was a perfect introduction um, of the Blonde Bomber to the world. Um, you know, I might not have got my hand raised, but I think everything about that fight, the lead up to the fight, and how it went down, I think I'm very pleased with that. You know, um, I think there was no loser in that fight. So yeah, very exciting and very happy to be back. Obviously, what people don't see is your dedication to the sport. I mean, since that fight. You know, we knew that you wanted to return to your training camp in Philadelphia. To do that, you had to go and quarantine first in Mexico, where you were with Barbie Juarez, and you trained hard in that gym year there. Then you been over, flew over to Philadelphia to train with, with Caddy Reese and Brian. People probably don't see the dedication to the sport on that side because of your persona. You know, how seriously you do take this sport. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, when I'm in the gym, I don't get my phone out and I don't film my stuff in the gym because when I go to the gym, it's business. I'm very, very serious. And um, I think people that are constantly having their phones on in the gym, filming, take selfies, and like, are they even training? I don't even think about that in the gym. So you might not see a lot of my gym stuff. You might not see a lot of training. You might not see a lot of film while I'm actually doing the hard work and the graft. Um, but I think that's also a sign that I am working hard. Um, and all the other stuff, you know, um, it's just me being a blonde bomber and just being, having fun and doing what I do and engaging with fans. Um, but yeah, you know, I'll do anything for boxing. Like I said, you know, um, I didn't go home, I haven't been home from Australia since the beginning of March. Um, you know, I have to go to uh, Mexico. But mind you, everything happens for a reason. That was an amazing experience with um, Bobby Juarez in, in Mexico and meeting all my Mexican fans as well. That was unreal. And then, yeah, being in Philly with um, Kaylee and Brian, it's just unreal. You know, eight weeks of camp with that. Like, I couldn't have asked for a better camp. Um, I've learned so much and I'm so excited to show everyone my improvements and just what I've been learning. Um, that Philly style in, in, um, in Philly, so yeah. Is that important to you to get the credit for your boxing as well? We know that like, you know, the way you promote yourself, you know, the attention that that, that delivers as well, but is it important to you to get that recognition? I know how much you care for the sport, I know how much you love the sport of boxing, and I know how much you love to go to war. We saw that against Shannon Courtney as well, but does, does that, is that something that you want or are you just happy to, to keep this journey going? Of course, you know, um, it's, I think, um, everyone would want to get respect for what they train so hard in, you know, um, to say that I, I don't really care is, is pushing them, but, um, you know, everyone has their opinions. If, if people don't want to give me respect, I don't care, you know, but it's nice when I do get it, it's nice when I get respect, it's nice when I get recognised for my skill and the hard work that I do put in, but I'm also not going to get bothered by it if I don't. I mean, if people want to have closed minds and just judge me on my appearance or my swear words or, or whatever they want to judge me on, it doesn't bother me um, because I know I'm working hard and it really is it's me, it's me, and um, anything I have to prove is to myself. Um, so yeah, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm on the way of um, becoming more and more you know, taken seriously and um, being a lot more respectful for my boxing. And I think after this fight, it's going to be a good fight and I'll be respected again. This fight, Beck Connolly, who you know, is always in tremendous fights, always an incredible competitor, but never often gets the kind of notice that she had for this fight, you know, already the weight of 119. She looks super fit. I think last time against Ramda Ali, it was a couple of days notice and the weight was 129 pounds or whatever it was. So you expect the very best Beck Connolly on Saturday night? Yeah, 100%. Um, and I've been saying that over and over again. Um, we're going to see the best Beck Connolly in there. And I'm going to see the best Beck Connolly in there. Um, so that's going to be exciting as well because we've seen what she can do um, on short notice and having to drop weight. She looks shredded. Like, she looks unreal, um, you know, and we all know Beck's a tough cookie. She is, but you know what, come August, August 7th, that cookie's gonna crumble because I feel like I'm gonna break it down and um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get that win, so, yeah. Beck, 
How are you? Tremendous uh, notice for this can. You look great. You've obviously trained extremely hard. Must be nice for you having fought some of the best fighters in the world to this time get a proper camp beneath you. Oh, full six weeks. Yeah, it's been completely different. But yeah, it's just excited, really. Obviously, a great performance from Ebony last time out. We know that you guys have respect for each other and a lot of, you know, we see that a lot in the female code as well. But we should expect a great fight on Saturday. We saw that in the Shannon for Courtney fight. She loves to come forward. You like to stand there and have a war as well. We should get a real good one on Saturday. Yeah, that's the kind of fight that I, as a fan, like to watch. So I had big respect for both women after that fight. And, uh, yeah, it's not always about the skill set, is it? Like, it's the type of fighter you like to watch. And boxing's a business at the end of the day, isn't it? If you can't put bums on seats and you're not selling to people, you're not anything. And I think she's done a real good job of that. You are always particularly in a division that is sometimes not overly deep like the bantamweight or super bantamweight female division really one fight away from quite a, a major fight and you've boxed you know all these top fighters Eddie Scott and Ram Ali a win for you on Saturday would sort of definitely change the trajectory of your career you are someone that comes out and gives these fighters a great test coming through but also in this division just one win away from potentially going on and fighting for a major title yeah, absolutely. This is the thing in the women's that I don't think a lot of people understand. There has it, there's getting there now, definitely, with all the young uns coming on up. But there's no depth to the division. So you had here and the world class, and there was no one sort of filling that gap. And people forget that, um, that you sort of say the Terry Harper, Natasha Jonas, Rachel Ball, and all those people. But in my second profile, I fought Christine Shergold. Like, she was a legit world champion. Like, sh I saw her win over 10 rounds with Kalia Karuni. Um, so that was in the second profile, and it was a major test. And, like, people forget, people like Elaine Greenan, the Scottish champion, like, sh she's no joke of a girl. Like, none of them have been jokes. Um, and, yeah, I kind of saw my... Somewhere right, if you can't get past me, you're not going, going all the way to the top, are you? And hats off to the, to the ones that are taking that tough sort of bar in their first fight, because you know their class. The likes of Ellie Scottney, like, I knew what we were getting into. Like, I follow the, I'm a big boxing fan, not just, I don't just do it. Um, so I followed her and Karis and everyone all the way through. So when these amateurs are turning over, like, you know what you're getting and you know how fastly they can go through the ranks. But yeah, hats off to them when they start with the bar that's been set. So. Well, thank you as always. We look forward to a tremendous fight on Saturday. Ebony Bridges against Beck Connolly this Saturday, kicking us off the live action on the DAZN broadcast. If we can have a head to head up here, please. Thank you. on the televised broadcast. Eight rounds uh, at Bantamweight was 119 pound, I believe the uh, official weight has been stipulated. And we're gonna speak to uh, Beck Connolly. Now, if you wanna come and join us, this is the Hello, most- Becca, this is the how's most, that mic Most you? talking <laughs> you've done you since last time. Um, so obviously you're listing there all the women that you've been in with over, over the years. I mean, it sounds as if you're almost categorizing yourself as that kind of gatekeeper, but is Saturday the chance for you on a full camp to actually break out of that mold and show people what you have got rather than showing people what these other women have got. Ah, oh, 100%. And Into your mic, please. Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. Is that better? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, no, 100%. I'm going, I was going there to win anyway, um, but I've had a full camp this time and it's definitely the kind of fight style that I like. And so, someone was asking me yesterday, they were like, what, what would you do if you were her? And you've got to think, she's been out of training. We know the improvements are going to be there. Um, I'd be wanting to show show my boxing skill if I was Ebony. So we're not expecting the same fighter to just come forward. And I've got a chin on me, haven't I? So <laughs> you'd be crazy like to sit there and trade all night because it's going to go like last woman standing there. And don't get me wrong, if that happens, then happy days because... The last thing I need to be doing is looking for someone yeah, around the yeah. ring, isn't it? <laughs> so is so is the six weeks that the training camp you had is that, is that 
is the difference between being able to, to train for Ebony Bridges, get a game plan together and, and try and execute that on the night. Have you had sparring that's similar to, to Ebony? Yeah, like, so sparring, so everything's all up in the air, wasn't it? Because I was with Paddy for like eight odd years and then Mike stepped into the breach when he retired last year and then I left Mike um, after the Ramla Ali fight just because my life outside of boxing was chaotic yeah. and I was like, this, this isn't working because I can't commit to the time you need me there and everything else um, so this time we've done completely unorthodox camp I've mixed and matched the boxing community has been like I think that's what's made me so happy is they've all stepped in like the coaches have stepped in and helped out for sparring I've been up with Gavin Burrows doing a lot of sparring with Katie Healy um, oh, she's brilliant. wicked isn't yeah, she she's, cool. she's class and I think we're going to see her like she just needs the experience and she's going to be world level like Fantastic. pretty quickly um, Barry at State of Mind Fitness in London like he's got some nice hard hitting girls who have been going down there a lot got some nails in my tyre, sat roadside <laughs> all day, oh, <laughs> normal <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it sounds like you're, you're ready and, and, and you know, bang up for this. Well, listen, we've got to hand over to the next one, but we will see you um, at the weigh-in tomorrow. You're looking in fantastic shape, so we, we, we wish you all the very all best. All the best. I'll go head-to-head on that weigh-in, I know. That's a bit intimidating. <laughs> nice one. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Um, so third up on the bill, uh, Johnny Fisher is in action against Sam Jones' big heavyweight. Ron Football is up against Danny Whittaker. Both guys are on the stage. Let's hand you back to Eddie. Well, thanks, guys. We go to three big heavyweight fights now in the garden on Saturday night. And also a sigh of relief uh, from a number of people in this room as we receive the operational document from the British Boxing Board of Control, which says that no more masks or visors for the corner team on Saturday, which is uh, good news in the progression as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. So good news for corner men's and team on Saturday night, and we go on to, as I said, the heavyweight fights. Johnny Fisher against Danny Whittaker. Uh, Johnny, this is a, a real test for you. I know that after your first two fights, Sam Jones and the team started to see something that you were ready to start moving on already. This time, someone with a winning record, a real fight for you at fight camp on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got to be very, very switched on. I've trained very hard with Mark Tibbs and Steve Andrews, and we want to show the improvements, and I'm going to need to show them improvements to beat someone like Danny Whittaker. Obviously, in those first two fights, you know, great performances against two guys that didn't really come to win, came to more survive. Still dangerous, but I think looking forward to the challenge of someone that's going to come and try and you know, win on Saturday, change his career path as well, and a really good solid test in just your third fight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my, my second fight, Phil Williams, is uh, someone who's, who's there to survive and made life difficult, but I've still got the stoppage. And I'm looking forward to a challenge with someone who comes to fight because when someone comes to fight, the openings will be there for me to exploit. Great training camp again with Mark Tibbs and, and team. Many hard rounds with, with Joe Joyce and others as well. You really are racking up the rounds in terms of sparring, getting some great experience in the gym as well. Yeah, that's where I've gained my experience. Well, I didn't have the longest amateur career. My experience has been gained sparring Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois, Fabio Wardley, guys like that, Dave Allen. So that's where my education has been made and now it's time to show them improvements when I step in the ring and every time hopefully I can show a little improvement. Danny, welcome. Uh, Hello. Big, big chance for you on Saturday. Looking out there, it's, it's quite a unique setting out there and you know, yeah. fighting a guy who's dangerous in Johnny Fisher but also a real novice in the pro game. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, it's amazing. I mean, thank you very much to yourself and Matchroom for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to fight on such a unique event and uh, just really looking forward to it. Uh, excited, relaxed, um, putting no pressure on myself. Just want to get in there and do the business on Saturday night and uh, look forward to putting in a good performance, yeah. We know that you, know, you come with a, a winning record, plenty of ambition as well. And in this uh, division, you know, against the likes of Johnny Fisher on this kind of platform, a win is, is huge for you in terms of moving forward for some of those fights. I know no pressure on yourself, but at the same time, you know what victory could mean oh, for your career. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive. Obviously, uh, a win is, is a massive platform for me to push on with my career. Um, and again, yeah, like you say, no pressure on myself. At the end of the day, um, I just want to put in a good performance. And, um, and fingers crossed, with a good performance, um, my, the quality of boxing that I can produce, I know will be good enough to... To, to win the fight, but I know, I mean, it's every way at boxing, so all it takes is one punch, so I need to be wary of, of, of Johnny, I know he's a big puncher, so, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting in there, I've been looking forward to the whole week, um, it's amazing, and again, thanks again for, for inviting me along. Well, thanks for taking the opportunity, and Johnny, finally to you, 
not too far from Romford. You can probably see it out the back there as well. We know only 250 fans, and a lot of them are yours on Saturday night. It'll be some atmosphere and, and great to see fans back. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to boxing. In a, a handful of my fans who are coming to support me. Got some big names coming. My dad's coming to watch. It'll be brilliant to have him ringside. I hope you've loaded up the buffets because he'll be ready to go. But listen, my job is to win on Saturday night and I've been preparing very hard and I hope to do it in a very good fashion. Thank you very much, Johnny and Danny. A great heavyweight fight. The path of Johnny Fisher continues this Saturday night against Danny Whittaker. Gentlemen, if we could have a head head up here, please. third contest, um, Whitaker. He um, saw him undone by David Adderley, he hit a couple of times around the back of the head and there was a few sort of strange shots here and there. Yeah. Um, but he went 10 rounds of Chris Healy for the central area and I actually thought he did enough to, to pinch the contest. Yeah. It was a bit of a war, dragged him into it. But you're looking at a guy that could legitimately be central area champion right now and that, for a third opponent, is very, very credible. Yeah, well, I, th I thought you I thought you nicked it for what it's worth. Very close fight, very close fight. And he's, he's agreeing with me, by the way, just off camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a proper fight, this. Yeah, and, and, and a real tough one uh, for, for Johnny Fisher, who we were just talking about there. He's like your real throwback mm. old British heavyweight, isn't he? Mm. The way he talks, the way he fights. But, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one, that. It's, um, it is. It, it will be, I guess, testament to, to, to Johnny Fisher's uh, preparation as far as sparring is concerned. Because he basically said that he's learning on the job. So yeah. all of the rounds that he's doing in the gym are valuable to him. And uh, he's going to have to sort of work and, and look to use that on the night. Yeah, I spoke to Sam Jones about him uh, a couple of days ago. And he said it's really interesting watching him sparring against Joe Joyce. He said he, he's able to handle more and more rounds with Joyce as the time goes on. And he said he actually does really, really well in the early stages of the spar against him. It's just developing that engine. Very explosive. Spoke to Fabio Wardley about him this week. He said, much quicker hands than you think. So just coming from that rugby background, they can sometimes be a bit stiff and a bit slow, but very quick hands, much looser than he looks. What I will say is, just on that, that just hearing that for me is a sign that he's he's a good fighter. Yeah. He's he's what you could say a natural just because he's getting better. I've seen some people just, just don't get any better when they're sparring with the same person, but he is, so that's exciting. Uh, well, another man who has proved to be a wrecking ball uh, in the division so far is the savage Alan Babbage. Another challenge uh, in front of him in Mark Bennett. Can he do the business and upset the apple cart or will the savage roll on eight threes at heavyweight on the bill on Saturday night? Both guys are standing by. Let's hand you back to the stage with Eddie. Yeah, thank you guys. As I said, we stay with the heavyweights. Two more heavyweight fights to come and this one is a cracker. Alan the savage Babich against Mark Bennett, a great fight on Saturday night. Alan, I'll start with you, or, or Savage, I don't know who we have at the moment, but looking very smart. You were here last year, uh, a tremendous performance against Shaundell Winters, which at the time people felt was a big step up for you. You continue to fight these guys who say they don't see what the fuss is about, they don't see anything special, but we see the same result every time. Yes, thank you for having me here. You know, this is the place that Savage was born. You know, when I walked out of that uh, ring walk, I felt something, you know, and, and that, that is with me tonight. And that is with me tonight and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and I'm gonna be ruthless, you know, it's gonna be ruthless. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be at my best ever, you know, because I had a, uh, I had a, a surgery on my hand that was troubling me that time when I fought Chandel Winters. So I'm twice as strong now, you know, and I'm really full in the zone, full in the zone. You can say that zone. Uh, that's very good, good, very good, that's I like good. that. And I'm full of the zone, and uh, I just can't wait, bro. I'm going to be ruthless. And all of you who has a slow heart rate, don't look at my fights. You know? you all you put your children away because it's going to be a blood fest. You know, I sense some blood in the air. One thing that as, um, people have always discussed with you is your weight, is your size. Last time out, and I know you, you don't turn down opponents. Last time out, we had a, a late notice opponent in Damien Chambers who was a cruiserweight, who was stepped up. You know, you, you flattened him, you, you ended the, the deal there. This time, you have a big, big heavyweight. You have someone that's about six foot five, about 19 stone, someone that's going to have a bigger reach than you, much bigger size. 
are they the kind of guys that you want as well? Because there are people saying that you're not really a fully fledged heavyweight. Well, I think I answered all of those questions in Joe Joyce camp just last week. We did 14 rounds, me and Joyce. And he was, he said after the, his fight with Kat Takam that I hit harder with 80, 18 ounces of gloves than Takam did with 10. So what, what should I explain more? You know, I went to Joyce camp only for that. You know, I wanted to show that I can be against the biggest heavyweight. And Joe Joyce is much tougher than Bennett. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. Bennett is probably a nice guy, but it's nowhere near the class. We did 14 rounds in two days, and I enjoyed it. And I don't see bigger heavy than Joyce around, you know. Mark Bennett talks, as a lot of people do, about trying to weather that early savage storm. And then a lot of people feel like your tank will empty after those three or four rounds. Yeah, Mark's already talked about the opportunity to maybe step on you late in the fight and stop you in that fight. How deep is that savage tank? And what happens on Saturday night? Well, you should ask George Joyce that and uh, Sam Jones. You know, we did eight rounds straight. I could do eight more. I wanted to do eight more. We, I could do 25 rounds with Mark Bennett. 25 rounds. And then you can bring in Nick Webb. And then I'm going to do another 12 with Nick Webb. And then you can bring whoever the fuck you want. And I don't care. You know, I don't care about people judging me all the time. Go judge me. Oh, fuck you all. You know, just like that. I, I am done. I've beaten everybody. I've knocked out everybody. Everybody you put in front of me. I've beaten the odds a thousand times. So all of you, fuck off. Well, we apologize for the language. We don't have to apologize quite as much. I don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't come off air now anymore, Alan. You know, you were a bit of a liability back in those early broadcast days. But, you know, you see Mark... Why do you challenge me then all the time? Sorry? Why do you do it, Eddie Hurd? Don't do you start on me. me? You challenge me, you look at me like, oh, you're small, you don't, no, no, we're really not going to talk like that. Trying no. to provoke you. Well, you succeeded. <laughs> don't tell me to tears down, because I will not. It can only go up from here, so please. Mark Bennett, can he handle the heat? Let me think. No. Mark? Welcome. Um, love the way you talked yesterday. I know you've taken this camp very seriously. You know, you've seen a lot of those opponents, short notice. You've had a proper camp for this fight. You look ready. You uh, Massive opportunity for you on Saturday night on the zone against Alan the Savage Babbage. Yeah, massive opportunity. I'm happy to be here, mate. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I believe that it's, it's my time. Um, I think that I've got the number on Savage, so we'll, we'll see on Saturday night, mate. A lot of people have, have said that before. Some might not have your ability, some not, might not have your size. But I think one thing that we do know now is he can fight. You know, at first it was, who is this guy? You know, Dillian White's sort of protege. But we know that he's extremely tough. The work rate is relentless as well. But you do have massive size on Alan Babich on Saturday. Yeah, I don't just think it's the size though, mate. I do think that his work rate is relentless. Yeah, I agree. But... I can fight, mate. Do you know what? He's not the only man in the world who can fight. We'll both have a scrap on Saturday night and we'll, I, I dare say the best man will win. And I'm d tipping it's going to be myself. Do you know I'm turning up to fight. I've had a good camp. I've had a good, I've had a good stock, Joe. You know, so I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Obviously, you've got a, a strong record yourself as well. And he does, has carved out a big profile for himself uh, in British boxing as well and in world boxing as well. A win for you on Saturday night, as I said to Danny Whittaker, you know, just puts your in a career in a whole different perspective, opens the door to some massive fights. Yeah, massively, mate, I, I, I agree. Um, hopefully the phone will ring after it, no matter what. But for my family and for myself, I think that it is a massive opportunity. And I do think that it'll open a lot of doors and a lot of avenues, which I'll take with both hands, mate, which I have done with this as well. So I'm ready. You seem extremely calm. You know, you've got Alan or Savage or the alter ego. Do you sort of just put that at the door and I, I'm sure you've watched the interviews as well. You, you, you keep that to the side and just focus on Saturday. Yeah, mate. Yeah, like I've said in the, interview, in, in the interviews, I'll do me and I'll let him do him. I do my business the way I do my business and I'll let him crack on how he wants to do his life. So, yeah. Good man. Well, Alan Babich uh, against Mark Bennett on Saturday night. Cannot wait for this fight. Absolute fireworks. Big fight in the heavyweight division. We're going to have a head to head up here, please.
do you don't want to tug on that suit too hard, do you? Even even big Andy Brown. <laughs> well, I like I, I stupidly did a couple of things um, as uh, Babich walked in this little marquee. Well, you tried to make him jump. I, I, I tried to make him jump. He didn't flinch. Um, and then I said, "You're looking, you're looking fit, mate. Were you about 14 stone?" <laughs> he was not, not, not impressed. Happy. Not no, impressed. Not I've got to that. curb it. No, and for those of you that haven't heard, Darren also told him that I bet on his uh, opponent in the last fight, Damien Chambers, which I obviously didn't, <laughs> by the way, because I'm not an idiot. And, uh, and and the looks that I was getting across One the One of us is going to get chinned at well, some yeah, point. yeah, probably me at your expense, so thanks very much for that. Uh, Big Mark Bennett has got a certain level of confidence that we haven't necessarily seen in any of his other opponents. There is a genuine belief there. There is a difference between saying you think you're going to win and reading the body language of yeah. the guy that actually thinks you see the big size discrepancy there. Bennett can fight as well. That, that's the thing. It's the size. He's huge, and, and, and he believes in himself he hasn't fought for a year and a half uh, the ultimate boxer yeah. against Nick Webb yep. but what he did show in that fight was heart toughness a good chin mm. uh, he does throw a very good overhand right does. Um, probably not the, the, the best shot for Babich you probably want to bring the shots yeah, up uppercuts true, yeah. but yeah he believes in himself he believes in his size he believes in his presence and um I feel being in front of uh, Alan Babich there, he'll, he'll have more confidence. I think, I think wow, I, I actually am a lot bigger than him. He is a small. I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. Uh, as some people have been saying, he's a big, he's a big bridge away. Is what Darren meant to say, Alan. If you're watching this back at some point, just go and lock yourself in your room and double yep, barrel. I will. Yeah, I will. Uh, ironing board against Luck the door. Luckily, I brought my daughter with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so surely you won't do you anything. You can't hurt a child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that is uh, uh, third from the top of the bill. Um, eight rounds of heavyweight um, Alan Babbage uh, and Mark Bennett now coming up 10 rounds in our chief support for the English heavyweight title the vacant uh, the holder Fabio Wardley faces Nick Webb who's in great form against Eric Pfeiffer in Gibraltar these two meet at last at fire camp on Saturday night and they're both on the stage standing by well thanks guys so yeah we go to our final heavyweight fight on the card this Saturday night live and exclusive on DAZN all around the world I cannot wait for this fight as much as I'm excited for Babich against Bennett, and of course the main event is a tremendous fight, two Brits going for the world title fight, I can't lie to you, I cannot wait for this fight between Fabio Wardley and Nick Webb. Although it's for the English heavyweight title, it feels like it's for so much more than that as well. Words back and forward, but two great young fighters who are putting it all on the line on Saturday. Fabio, I'll come to you first. A great fight, one that you wanted. Um, not duck to challenge as a pro. You seem extremely confident going in, but this is a real fight on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. This is what I've been asking for. I've been asking for this fight, and I'm, like you know with me, I don't turn down any fights. I never say no to anyone. Any name you've ever put forward to me, I've always said yes. Just send them, make sure they turn up, and it's the same attitude with this. It's a good fight. It's a good test, and that's what I want to do is be in those good fights and push myself through, and ultimately I'm coming through on the night. We know it's the heavyweight division. It's dangerous, but you have spoken with tremendous confidence going into this fight as well. You almost like you don't believe defeat is possible to Nick Webb. We saw him in a tremendous win last time out against Eric Pfeiffer. We know he punches hard as well, come back from, from defeats as well. You, you super confident going into this one or you, you're aware of the threats that Nick Webb pose, poses? Always confident. I don't think there's any point being in this game if you're not going to be confident in yourself. You don't have that self-belief. Like I don't care what man stood in front of me, what they've done before. No one's got in the ring with me. Nick's never got in the ring with a guy like me, and he's going to find that out on the night. And ultimately, the way it finishes, is this, is this ending in a knockout on Saturday night? You see nothing else but a KO victory for Fabio Wardley against nothing Nick. Nothing else. Nothing else is acceptable. There's no other way this is going. It's not going to points. The judges won't be needed. You can save yourself a few quid and send them home. They won't be needed. Nick, welcome. Um, tremendous confidence and momentum for you after that win against Eric Pfeiffer. You went into that fight as almost a, an underdog, or certainly a 50-50. You and Scott Welch done tremendous work. You look in tremendous shape for this fight. Um, this, is, this is a big one, isn't it? Big, big moment for you. All the things you've come back from as well. You, you've got a, a, a really nice air of confidence with the team as well going into this fight. Thank you for having me on again. And um, I'm looking forward to fighting. I've trained real hard. Coming off a great win, like you said. And uh, everybody doubted me then. Everybody doubts me now, so I'm in the same story and I'm ready to put all the doubters wrong. You are an underdog and, and you are with a book as well, but do you feel like an underdog truly in this fight? I mean, after that last win, after everything you've been through, Fabio's moved quickly, very limited amateur experience, limited rounds as a professional 
as well. Do you see something different in this fight that they see? Oh, yeah, I see it totally different. Like, I'm actually laughing that they put me as the underdog, so um, I'm, I'm here to show what I can do, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Almost come under a barrage of, uh, you know, Dillian White heavyweights, you know, with the Savage as well, and, and Fabio Wardley as well, but for your career as well, a victory against Fabio Wardley going to put you right back up there as well. This is for the English heavyweight title, but it feels a lot bigger than that as well. And after this win, that win against Pfeiffer, if you can beat Wardley on Saturday, you're going to be in an unbelievable position. Yeah, it's great. Um, like you said, I'll be in a great position and I'm ready to put myself in that position. And finally, we saw the power against Eric Pfeiffer. Again, he feels like he wins this fight by KO. Do you feel the same? I mean, a good win against Molina had to overcome a, a, a couple of sharp right hands towards the end of that fight as well, but fully confident that you have the power to take Fabio Wardley out? I have the power and I have the boxing ability. You know, everyone just uh, knows me for my power, but you will see that I can box very well as well. So, yeah, I've got it all, so I'm ready to prove it. Well, I feel this is a real 50-50 heavyweight fight. Fabio Wardley against Nick Webb, the English heavyweight title, but plenty more on the line than that as these two young heavyweights go at it at fight camp right out there in the garden on Saturday night live on the zone. Gentlemen, have a head-to-head -head here, please. I do. Look at the progression of Fabio Wardley with the Molina fight, but obviously you can't go from you know having a few, sort of 10, 11 fights Molina and then to world level. He said, look, I want to build slowly. I want to sort of you know pick up the set of belts. So with the form that Nick Webb has been in, this sort of crossroads encounter as it is. By the way, do you want to adjust that mic? Oh, because got, oh, if you haven't this noticed, Nick is, is really why I'm slightly here. taller than Beck Connolly. So, Nick, do you want to do you want to come on in? Um, Darren's adjusting the mic just because the, our, our last our last guest was Beck Connolly. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, we we were just saying what a great performance uh, it was in Gibraltar. Listen, we know that the pedigree that Eric Pfeiffer had as a, as an Olympian yeah. and a world medalist, but you took him apart in two or three yeah. rounds in, in the display of your life just give us an idea how did you feel that night going back to the hotel I feel I felt amazing mate and uh, listen to the comments you boys were making me that night made it even better you know what I mean so thank you yeah and um, yeah I'm, I'm excited for Saturday now yeah we we, um, we spoke to Scott didn't we Scott Welch your coach um, it was earlier that day, wasn't it? Was, it? On the yeah. sat down before the bell, and he's been waxing lyrical about you, saying how much you've come on, etc. How how has the relationship blossomed between you two? Yeah, I think you know, I believe in him as my coach. I believe in what he says, and every time he's took me to the well, took me to the fights, I've pulled it out. So my, I've got full confidence in my coach, and, and me and him together are a force to be reckoned with. Um, Fabio's got an unusual style at heavyweight, certainly. Mm. Not that easy to necessarily prepare for, get sparring in. How have you managed to, to sort of prepare for this fight? Yeah, I've had great sparring this time. I've probably had the best sparring and the best camp I've ever had. So um, I've had a guy called Jekko in camp with me. He's, um, you know, he's quite a mover, similar to Fabio. So we've prepared very well. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued as to how yeah. this goes. Um, Fabio's had some progression in eight or nine fights, uh, obviously leading up to this, given his lack of amateur experience. Do you, do you rate where he's got to in the space of time that he's managed to, to achieve it? Do you respect him as a fighter? To, to be honest, he's done very well as a fighter. As, considering the experience he's had to get this far, it's great. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of people that's done what he's done. Um, but this fight on Saturday will be a, a big learning curve for him. It will be him losing, but he will become a better fight because of it. 
Great scrap for the English uh, heavyweight title, our chief support on Saturday night. We wish you all the best, uh, Thank Nick. You. We shall see you best, uh, at the weigh-in tomorrow. Thanks for we coming can. to speak to us. Um, well, that's uh, a nice hors d'oeuvre for our main event, which has been uh, some time in the making this. Jazz Dickens and Kid Galahad, two world title challenges in waiting on Saturday night. Our chief support, the IBF vacant featherweight world title, is going to be walking away with one of these if we find a winner Saturday night. Both are on the stage, our main event for week two at Fight Camp. Let's hand you back over to Eddie Hearn. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we get to the main event ahead of a great card on Saturday night. But for me, this fight is the fight of Fight Camp. It's my number one pick for Fight Camp. Anytime two Brits get the chance to go at it for a genuine world title fight, the opportunity to change their life beyond their imaginations. Of course, Sheffield against Liverpool. Kid Galahad against Jazza Dickens for the IBF featherweight world title live on the zone this Saturday from Fight Camp. We're going to go to the trainers first. Dominic Ingle, welcome. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> waiting and waiting and of course the incredible Warrington Lara drama but forgetting that it's here Saturday night Kid Galahad has a chance to become world champion yeah it's been a long time he's been in camp almost from his last fight uh, a year ago and off in, in February so yeah he's never been off it and uh, the time's arrived now and uh, on Saturday night he's going to take the belt and, and be world champion a lot of people debating the fight debating the styles as well but one thing they do talk about is activity of course Kid last box in February 2020, I believe, almost 18 months uh, ago by the time he steps into the ring as well. But we do also know he never leaves the gym. And literally for that 18th month period, he hasn't left the gym. But Jazza has been more active. An advantage for Jazza or confident that the kid's going to be fresh and ready to go? It's always good to go through the process of, you know, making the way, having the, the, the camps for the fights. It's good to have that. But when you're at the level that these two are, I don't think it counts for much because it's all about keeping active during the time in between the fights. And, you know, Galahad has been a consummate pro. He's kept, he kept moving, kept sparring, and he's kept active and he's sharp. He's not going to ring rust. Um, you know, and there's less damage, there's less mileage on the clock. Jazza has been in two great fights. Great fight with recently crowned world champion Lee Wood. So what about that? You know, he's, he's got the chance on Saturday night uh, to take a title. If he doesn't, I think, you know, he might get another chance against Lee. But I don't think it's the inactivity on Galahad's uh, part is going, to be, is going to play anything in this fight. First fight, tremendous fight. You, of course, were in the corner for that fight as well. Expect another great fight on Saturday. Does that first fight play into anyone's mind, anyone's tactics as well? I mean, both guys are going to be desperate to take this opportunity. I say way back then when that fight happened, they were both big prospects at the time. You, don't, you didn't see fights like that, of that magnitude at that time. Two, fight, two guys fighting for a British title. And it was a cracking fight, and it was nip and took all the way. You know, Jazza was probably slightly in front in that fight until, until Galahad caught him with, a, I think, the left hand and, and stopped him. And look how the paths have gone since. You know, Jazza's had great fights, been some good fighters, Regando. And this is where they, back, they are now back in a world title fight. So it just shows the level of both fighters. And I don't think that first fight will have anything to, you know, anything to do with this one. I think it's going to be a totally different fight. Thanks, Dom. Derry, um, huge moment for you in the gym and, of course, Georgie Vaughan and the team as well. You've been involved in some big fights as well. This is a, a massive fight for British boxing, a massive fight for Jazza and, and one that someone's got to grab with both hands. Yeah, it is, Ed. Um, it's also life-changing for me, the fighter. But we know Jazza had a great camp. Georgie is our coach. Um, Georgie's done, and myself has done everything right. What's been asked for Jazz, Jazz has done everything right, what we've asked of him. So we're looking forward to it. Um, I know Jazz is, he's coming off three great wins, well, four great wins, I should say. Um, picking, a couple, uh, picking up a couple of belts on the way, getting good rounds in, making things easy, making, making good fights look easy, hard fights look easy. So we know we're ready, Jazz is ready, and we're looking forward to it. Talk about that inactivity. I mean, you can argue it either side as well, but, but definitely in the argument, better to be the active one. It is, but we know, we know Barry's a, a, a two athlete, he's a, he's a two fighter. Um, He's a true professional, I should say. He lives in the gym, along with Jazz. But we know that we've been active. Um, we've had against good opposition. Um, Lee Wood, who's become world champion the weekend. Jazz had, had a great performance against him, a great win. Walsh in the, in the golden contract final. Everyone was saying, you know, it's going to be a tough fight. But we had a game plan, what Jazz stuck to. George came up with a game plan where we were going to make it easy. Jazz has stuck to it. And I thought it was a, a tremendous boxing of skills he used that night and I won the fight convincingly and we've boxed good, good opponents coming up to this and we know we're ready. Obviously you, you've had massive support from, from the city yourself and we know they really get behind their own but a massive life-changing opportunity and a great story 
in Jazza Dickens if he can become world champion on Saturday? Yeah, it is, but he, this guy deserves all the credit himself. He's a, he's a proper athlete. Um, he always, people always talk about him, you know, he stops for everyone. He's a people's champion, he's a, he's a true champion, he's a true athlete. And Saturday night, it's about him being world champion and then, you know, big things to come in the city for him. Thanks, Derry. Barry, kid, massive opportunity, something you've dreamed of for a long time on Saturday night. You go out there to become world champion. This is, this is the moment of your career on Saturday. 100%, you know, it's been a long time coming. I'm just focused. I can't wait. Saturday night, I'm going to be IBF champion of the world. And um, I'm, just, I'm just focused, Eddie. You know what I mean? I'm just in the zone. Talk about that first fight. I know that, you know, whether it has a bearing or not, it was a tremendous fight. You know, we go back to that when we're selling this fight, when we're telling people to tune in as well. Slightly behind in that fight before you got the stoppage, but we expect another tremendous battle on Saturday. 100%, you know, Jazza is a, he's a, he's a tough fight for anyone, no matter what level. And, you know, to be honest with you, I can't actually remember nothing from the first fight. I don't even remember what happened yesterday, let alone what happened 10 years ago. I'm not, you know, I just focus on what's ahead. And I'm focused on Saturday night and doing a job on Jazza Dickens. I know you're not looking beyond that, but you know, you look at the Lee Wood victory yeah. and obviously Warrington Lara coming up. The division yeah. is red hot amongst Brits, but also on a world level as well. Life changing victory on Saturday. Every fight is life changing, Eddie. You know, for me, every fight is life and death. And that's it, you know, Saturday night, it's not going to be no different. Jazza, um, you know, we saw a Cinderella story last week with Lee Wood, you know, someone that you defeated yeah. not long ago. We know you've got a city behind you, and yeah. that's not really going to matter on Saturday, is it? You just have to be the better fighter on the night and somehow get your hands on that red and gold belt. Yes, of course. I've had a um, great preparation, thanks to my team, MTK, all my team around me. Um, I'm grateful to be on this platform, the zone, and my team kicking off great. Great night ahead. It's amazing what you have done, by the way. Congratulations to you and um, on my own career. If I was to be guided towards this fight in any way by yourself or anyone else in the game, it'd probably be just how it's gone. I've had great preparation, great fights leading up to this point, and to fight for the world title, I've ticked every box below. So now I'm in a good, good position now. Doing everything professionally, I'm strong and ready to fight. People talk about the slickness of, of Kid Galahad. Obviously, you've boxed him before as well, but. Is it a case of going out there and winning the rounds? You have to be ferocious yourself. You need to be extremely active in this fight. And you have to take this opportunity come Saturday. Of course I have to take the opportunity, but not on his terms, you know. He might be slick, but I'm better, you know what I mean? I'm a good fighter. I'm a, I know what I can do. He can, um, he can be as slick as he wants, but slick doesn't inflict any pain on me, you know what I mean? He can be slick as he likes, so I'll win the fight how I'm going to win the fight. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, talk about game plans and stuff like that. I don't really consider game plans too much because you go out of the window when, when something's going well. You don't, you keep doing it, do you know what I mean? And you adapt on the fly when you can. So I'll be resilient in there and I will also be able to adapt to anything that he brings. I know you've paid your dues in this sport and to become a world champion would be massive yeah. for you yeah. and the city. But what would it really mean to you on Saturday night of everything that you've given to the sport and this sport has given to you to, to raise... Have your arm raised on Saturday as the world champion would be would be massive in the life of Jazza Dickens. Yeah, it's the best. It's, it's the best in it to think like that. And you know, at this sport, it's the best and it's the worst in it. And I've suffered both sides. You know what I mean? I've suffered. I've endured both the worst and I've come through it. And to be to get my crown there, the red and gold belt, it'll be beautiful. And I'm grateful to be on this platform, like I say. Well, Jazza, kid, I wish you the best of luck. This is a tremendous fight. Two Brits going for ultimate glory on Saturday night. The IBF featherweight world title right outside there in the garden at Fight Camp. Live and exclusive on the zone. It's Sheffield against Liverpool. Absolutely everything on the line. Gents, if we can have a head-to-head -head here, please.
23 years of age when they first met for the uh, British Super Bantamweight title, I think it was, and this is uh, eight years on, so 30 and 31 years of age, at the peak of their powers now, in a career-defining opportunity for, for both of them. Um, we've done a, a bit of a technical breakdown on the DAZN platform, which you can check out. Just uh, not a full breakdown, just a few things to have a look out for technically, what might kind of play into to the fight as it goes on. Um, but what is telling, what we can talk about there, is body language. Galahad looking quite tense there. Um, Jazza looking very, very relaxed, very yeah. self-assured. He's a different fighter to, to the one that lost that first fight eight uh, years ago. Absolutely. <laughs> Touching on the tactics piece we've done, uh, we could have spoke for another hour. Yes. On that. There's so much to talk about when you when you look at this fight. It is, it's, it's brilliant. The fact that they fought all those years ago as well is another is another talking point in itself. But yeah, there's so, some people deal with stress and pressure differently. You know, Jazz seems to be taking all in his stride. If confidence couldn't get higher, you know, Lee Wood, just, who he holds a win over, has just won a world title. Yeah. So that he's buzzing, he's extremely full of confidence. Uh, and that brilliantly matched Golden Contract Tournament that, of course, exactly. Jazza and Lee met in in the semi-final, that has set those fighters up very, very well. And one thing they did mention there was the lack of activity yeah. on Galahad, and that could be a key factor. Especially the way he fights, he relies yeah. on timing and distance uh, to get his eye in, etc. And you get that, we've touched it on it loads of times, but you get that under the lights with the, the eight-ounce gloves on. But yeah, it's, it's I, like, honestly, it's a brilliant fight. There, there's some really swaying towards uh, Barry, some Jazza. Uh, for me, it's a real pick -em. It really is because of that activity, lack of activity from, from Barry, and, and the fact that Jazza is just buzzing at the minute. Well, Zoukan, of course, uh, dethroned with the WBA regular last weekend by Lee Wood, who will be keeping a very close eye on this one uh, on Saturday night, as will Josh Royington, who is going to try and right those wrongs against Maurizio Lara at the beginning of September in Leeds. We cannot wait for that either. All change in the featherweight division. One of these two could get their hands on that red and gold belt. The IBF World Featherweight title, Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens, our main event on Saturday night. But we will see you at the weigh-in tomorrow. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye.